Did the Great British Bake Off musical rise to the occasion? I'm not gonna sugarcoat this review. Has this show found the perfect recipe for success? Does it have all the right ingredients for a delicious evening of musical theatre? Honestly, I could keep going and doing these for another 45 minutes. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe. I am obsessed with all things theatre, and I am a theatre critic based here in the UK, and a content creator on YouTube. Today, I am going to be reviewing the brand new musical based on the beloved TV show, The Great British Bake Off. It is, of course, The Great British Bake Off musical. This opened last night at the Noel Coward Theatre in the West End. Now, you may remember me talking about this show before. That's because it had a little bit of a pre-West End tryout run last summer at the Everyman Theatre in Cheltenham. I went to go see the show there, and I did a little bit of a review, but things have changed. Things have changed, Raoul. And the production has been spruced up more than a little bit for the West End. It also has some new cast members. There's a bit of new material as well. So I'm going to be bringing you a brand new review of the show. So stay tuned. In today's video, we are going to be discussing it all from the cast to the set to the songs and the most pressing question on many people people's lips. What exactly is the Bake Off musical? Who is it for? How does it work? Why is it here? All will be revealed. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe to my stage YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this one. I'm seeing so many exciting shows this week, so there are many more videos coming your way in which I review them. Also, if you want to be able to see my videos a little bit earlier than everyone else and gain access to some exclusive content as well, you can sign up to be one of my YouTube members. Click on the link in the description and for just £2.99 a month, you can gain access to all of that good stuff. At the other link in the description, you can sign up for a free account with ShowScore. If you feel like reviewing shows for yourself, including the Great British Bake Off musical, you can make a free account using that link and you can rate the shows that you have seen on Broadway or in the West End. Now, let's talk about the Great British Bake Off musical. <gasps> So there's an elephant in the room, but probably an elephant made out of bread or pastry or something ridiculous. What is the Great British Bake Off musical and why does this exist? Because when this was first announced, uh, not everyone was convinced by the idea. I think people thought it was this very easy commercial cash grab that was going to just uh, take the mickey out of the show and parody it. The kind of thing that you might see at the Edinburgh Fringe where you see lots of parody musicals. You see like the Game of Thrones parody musicals and the Harry Potter parody musicals and all of this stuff. And even though all sorts of different types of media have been adapted for stage musicals before, I think people were surprised to see a TV show being adapted for the stage. Those people have a short memory and have forgotten about the award-winning Jerry Springer, the opera. So this is not untrodden ground. And yet, I too didn't know quite what to expect. I was assuming that they would be playing the whole thing very much for laughs, and there are certainly laughs. But essentially what this is, is just all of the content and material that The Great British Bake Off has given us it's all poured into this show. You get acknowledgements of every single moment. It depicts an entire series of bake-offs structured in a very clever way because that's obviously a lot to get through in a two-act, two-and-a-half-hour musical. But it has all of the little features and hallmarks of a regular series of bake-off. You meet your contestants, you have your judges, you have your presenters, you get to see a lot of different bakes, you see technicals and showstoppers, you see eliminations and judging and blind judging. You see that little bit where the judges are discussing why they've assigned this challenge. Don't forget the little comic skits that the presenters do in between challenges. You see the contestants getting to call home after they've won something. But then we also get this lovely glimpse behind the scenes when the cameras stop rolling and we get to find out a little bit more about their lives and the parts that wouldn't be shown on television. But it is very much just like the Great British Bake Off, just put onto the stage. And it succeeds for the same reason that The Great British Bake Off succeeds as a TV show. Oh, for my American audience, I should say throughout this, pretend I'm saying The Great British Baking Show. I know you call it something different. Because the great thing about Bake Off as a TV show is that it has all of the cake elements and this competition, but you also get to know the people and it has so much heart and so much sincerity. And I think that's why people really watch it. Yes, the cake is great, but it's more about this sense of community that it creates, and the show has that in abundance. So now that I've explained to you what it is, let me tell you what I thought. So when this was in Cheltenham, I gave this a four-star review, and it remains 
a four star production for me. I think it's gotten a little bit tighter and it's gotten a little bit stronger in the move from Cheltenham to the West End. I like the upgrades that they've made to the set, incorporating projections, some of the stuff they do with lighting. They've added in um, some onstage swings who cover the other roles in the show, but they also dance around um, in a couple of numbers. The whole thing just feels like it's been polished and refined and upgraded for a West End audience, which is exciting. And it gives you that level of professionalism and glitz that you might expect from a night out at a West End musical. What I loved about getting to see the show a second time is having already been surprised by it so much the first time and being bowled over by how much heart it has, not only did I get to listen to everyone else reacting to those sort of unexpected moments within the show where it can be really tear-jerking and really emotional, but also I got to admire the structure of the show. And I think in looking at the whole world of Bake Off and deciding what goes where and how they're going to do it, and avoiding trying to feel just repetitive with like then there will be an elimination every five minutes or something like that. I think it's been assembled in such a clever way to keep it engaging and dynamic and to add in tension and allow you to spend enough time with all of these characters. One of the other things I love about this show is that it's a proper ensemble cast, like a come from away, like many other shows where you get to know all of these individuals and it gives each actor the opportunity to pour so much character into the person that they are playing. Which is perfect for Bake Off because we meet all of these personalities and we get to know each of them over time. Going back to what I was talking about with the structure before, this show does something very clever in that they deliver a lot of musical numbers that are what an audience might expect. They are the Great British Bake Off, but with jazz hands and sparkly aprons and like, not a kick line necessarily, but that, that kind of a vibe where it's giving you like, Bake Off, but make it a musical. But what they also do is do something a little bit unexpected perhaps, where they're going to give you just such sincerity and heart and it's going to be so wholesome and meaningful and a layer of depth that perhaps not all audiences were anticipating. And what they do very cleverly is they alternate both of these approaches. So one of the first songs is this song called Obviously, where they're baking and this one character is singing about being competitive. And then the next song is a little bit more sincere. It's a beautiful song called Somewhere in the Dough. I love this. I love the lyrics of it. I think it's incredibly clever. There are baking puns in abundance throughout this show, but also just, just beautiful, a beautiful turn of phrase. And then after that, we go back to something a little more jazz handy that just dials up the ridiculousness. And then we have something even more sincere and then something even more ridiculous and then something even more sincere. So they're alternating these two approaches and almost constantly catching the audience off guard. We're like, oh, it's going to turn serious now. Oh no, it's now really fun again. Oh, but now there's this utterly beautiful and profound touching moment. And so it's like they're hitting you with both barrels of what you've expected this show might be and then what you didn't see coming, but you're going to love. To be absolutely clear with who I am talking about here, Rachel Cavanaugh has directed this masterfully and the way that we move from scene to scene and the way that it's all staged, it's just an easy, satisfying watch that proves to be surprisingly emotionally compelling. And I think she does really well to deliver that. Writing team Pippa Cleary and Jake Brunger have written the book, music and lyrics. So they've collaborated on the lyrics. Pippa Cleary has written the music and Jake Brunger has written the book. All of the above, tremendous, fantastic. I think they are two of the most exciting new British musical theatre writers we have right now, and they deserve to be celebrated and uplifted. The songs are catchy. They will instantly get in your head. The way that they have musicalized actual themes from the Great British Bake Off, like the actual like do 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 and other parts of the show. Very, very clever. Very clever. There's so much humanity in these lyrics. Like I've said before, baking puns. So many baking puns. Clever baking puns that then get turned on their head and mean other things. It's it's exactly what this show ought to be doing. And they were the perfect people to write this show. And I'm so glad all of these pieces came together. I also want to shout out Georgina Lamb, who is the choreographer. There are some moments of legit like dance in the show, but I'm also imagining that she had something of a hand in a lot of like the baking ography that gets done with spoons and pans and all of this sort of stuff. I love all of that as well. That's fantastic to look at. And it's nice to have all of those details around when solo songs are happening. It's just a really rich visual on stage at all times. Finally, Alice Power gets a lovely credit in the program for designing the set, the costume, and the cake. There are some really brilliant and whimsical 
cake designs in this, as you would expect with Bake Off, where they craft these amazing, ridiculous and wonderful things. But the costuming is lovely, and I was studying all of these different costumes. I love how it just brings out character in these subtle, realistic ways. It looks exactly like people you would see on Bake Off, but you get to know them through the clothes that they are wearing as well. And I love the set. It's instantly familiar, it's very clever with some of the other things that it can do. Um, they're very clever to be able to use the front of it to then change things behind occasionally. The whole creative team just give you exactly what you need. So after hearing me gushing about all of this, you may wonder why this isn't a five-star review from me. I think the cast are exemplary. I love the writing, the structure of it, brilliant. I think this does what a Bake Off musical ought to be perfectly. They have taken the brief of what they needed to create here and they have delivered a showstopper. However, for me, what stops it hitting that fifth star, and it's very tricky because it's not even a criticism necessarily, it's just a personal preference. I really love all of the heartwarming, meaningful stuff and getting to know these characters, but possibly what a lot of the audience has come for or what they might have anticipated the audience has come for is to see these parody versions of the Bake Off judges. So instead of Paul Hollywood, we have Phil Hollinghurst, and instead of Prue Leith, we have Pam Lee. They're these broad comic caricatures. They're very funny, they're very well portrayed, and they do these comedy musical numbers. So Pam gets a very fun and very impressive opening number to the start of act two, and then later in the same act, they have a sort of an old school buddy duet moment. Very anything you can do, very you're the top from anything goes. Oh, oh, which I'm literally wearing right now. This is my you're the top top as opposed to being a soggy bottom. I'll let you think about that one. And these are really crowd-pleasing moments and I get why they're in the show. But for me, it just takes away from the time that we spend with the contestants as characters. When we open the second act, I want to get right back to them and I want to have more of those endearing and meaningful parts of the show. And I think the balance of it, with it having now arrived to the West End, it feels like it's tipped just a little bit more towards the glitzy commercial side of things rather than being wholeheartedly sincere. And again, I think that balance is important and possibly that's what it needs to do to sustain a further life. And that's what's going to leave audiences more impressed. I just, I prefer that other thing that it does alongside the jazz hands. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. If I had a couple more teensy criticisms, there is innuendo aplenty, as you would expect, which a lot of other people seem to enjoy. And I did, I felt like there were one or two moments that maybe crossed the line of good taste the slightest amount. It's still very family friendly and it's still gonna go squarely over the heads of any children in the audience. Um, but I, 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 was, I was moderately taken aback by a couple of moments. You're, you're all probably gonna love it. They also do this thing occasionally, which is really interesting, where the contestants speak directly to the audience to talk about the process of filming Bake Off and all the stuff you don't know. And there's one particular trivia fact where they said all of the ovens have to be tested in the morning, so someone has to come in really early, like 6.30 or 7 or something, and bake a bunch of identical Victoria sponges in all of the ovens. That's really interesting. It's a little bit structurally unusual that they sort of break the fourth wall of the tent to have this conversation with the audience, and I'm wondering if there are ways that those facts could be sewn into the narrative, by those characters having a conversation with each other, but then there's a lot that they do pack into the show and they'd probably have to lose a little bit of material in order to do that. So I get it. Um, I just wonder if there's maybe a little bit more of a sophisticated way that that could have been done. I don't know. It remains a show that has absolutely stolen my heart and that I will easily recommend to many people, as I will do later in this video. So let's talk about this cast. We could be here a while because there are so many cast members in this show that do a fantastic job. Uh, some of the first that we meet are Scott Page and Zoe Burkett as our presenters, Jim and Kim. Zoe is new to the cast in the West End and her and Scott have this brilliant onstage chemistry. She also gets some lovely vocal moments, but the two of them are so endearing and so charismatic and so funny and have such a brilliant rapport with each other. But the best thing about them is that they're so believable as TV presenters. The two of them both have a little bit of television experience and they both have that quality that you look for in that kind of a TV presenter. They both scream Bake Off presenter, even though they're not emulating anyone specific. They're drawing on sort of the vibes of presenters past, uh, but they're not parodying 
any specific presenters that the show has had. The same cannot be said for John Owen Jones and Hayden Gwynn, who are playing our judges, the aforementioned Phil Hollinghurst and Dame Pam Lee. John Owen Jones is a dead ringer for Paul Hollywood. The voice is spot on. The mannerisms, the way they've costumed him is brilliant. He's got the hair, he's got the stare. He gets this brilliant number called Slap It Like That, where he's slapping around this strudel dough and all of the innuendos are there. They're just, they're just right there. He even gets to do an amazing John Owen Jones high belted note right at the end, which I appreciate very much. The man should never be on stage and not be allowed to do that. It should be the law. Hayden Gwynn is new to the cast for the West End and she's just brilliant. She is commanding and austere, but still warm at the same time and very impressive in her act two opening number. Some of the things that she does on that stage, you may not expect for her to do, but they are very impressive. I will say that. And she's very funny as well in this very dry way, like a wine, like a dry, dry wine. Then we move on to the bakers and they're all just brilliant. I do feel like, and we have a lot of characters on stage and we don't have enough time to explore everyone. There are two or three of them that I feel only get used for comic effect. And I would like for them to have even just like a passing moment or a little bit more time to just have a little bit more humanity and depth but they're really funny and they land punchlines and it's important that we get the laughs in during the show. I appreciate that. I just feel like everyone else is fleshed out so well and when you get to know them, you learn so much about them that you want to have that with everyone. This writing is Moorish. So Michael Carhill plays Russell, a flamboyant aeronautical engineer. He's very fun. He gets some lovely comic moments. He's one of the ones who I feel like I would love for him to have a little bit more depth, but where he is used to comic effect, he is tremendously funny. As is Jay Segal, who plays a environmentalist vegan, um, who <laughs> gets some really entertaining uh, comic moments throughout the show. He's one to watch out for, I will say, and get some great vocal moments as well. He does this lovely little vocal counter melody over the top of the first song, The Bake Off Tent. Grace Moat has joined the cast for The West End. I'm a huge fan of Grace's. I think she's such a versatile talent. And I love that she's getting this moment in a principal role on a West End stage where she gets this great song. She sings a song called Obviously Near the Start of the Show, where we find out her character has a competitive streak. She's a bit of a perfectionist. And I love the way that they've built this character and the way that they've written her. And she's so familiar of like a certain type of contestant you've seen from seasons past. This sort of young and charming, lovely girl who's studying humanity at university. But I love that she says all of the things that you never normally get to hear in a Bake Off because they're just too charming to each other. And her character is a little bit more cutthroat, shall we say. Another of my favorites is Kat Sanderson, who plays Francesca. She is a lovely and warm and genuine character. And I love the way that she engages with the different characters on stage. She kind of gets utilized to open other characters up and have conversations with them while revealing things about herself as well. But it's very honest and it's very real. And she has a lot of sides to her personality that not all writers would necessarily give her. You know, you could very easily just make her like, oh, the friendly Italian woman. Um, but a lot of the other sides that she shows as well, especially in a conversation that she has with a character called Hassan, who we'll talk about in a minute. It's really illuminating and it's really layered. So her character, Francesca, gets a song called Grow. I've spoken about this on YouTube before, but this is one of my favorite new musical theater songs in a while because the lyric is so clever and so profound. And it talks about a topic that I don't think has ever really been explored much in musical theater before. And I think this is a really great way of platforming it. And it's one of the first moments in the show that really hits you in the heart and makes you go, oh, this is gonna be a lot more than I was expecting. And this, this has a lot more substance to it. And it's the first moment of three in the show that made me cry. And needless to say, she performs it beautifully, heartbreakingly, really. So I told you about Hassan. This is Aaron Rayner's character. They've made him look even younger for the West End stage, or I was sat slightly further away. Um, but I feel like in Cheltenham, he didn't read as young as his character actually was. Here he does. Uh, so he plays this young guy living in Wembley um, who comes to Bake Off with his lucky t-shirt. And he's got a lovely 
attitude. We come to find out more things about his character. I would love for him to have a song, but I don't think there's time. I agree structurally that the moment that he has where we find out more about him, even though it feels like it could build to a song, it probably shouldn't. I just think it's a shame because he does have a lovely voice. Um, but he's so well acted. He, he does such a fantastic job. He's such an endearing presence. And it's one of those moments where you're seeing a young actor on a West End stage and you just know that they're going to have a promising career because he's so engaging and so charming and so utterly committed to the role that he's portraying. I think he's fantastic. Next, we have to talk about Claire Moore, the legendary Claire Moore, and I may get emotional because Claire Moore is an icon. If you don't know, I'm about to give you a very important musical theatre history class because Claire Moore was not only in the original production of Phantom of the Opera, she was also in the original West End production of Miss Saigon. And she has played Christine, and she has played Ellen, and she has been Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors. She has this amazing, illustrious career behind her. She is an icon of the stage. And I feel like going into this production, people are like, oh, John Owen Jones is in this, that's great. And it is, he's tremendous, but I need people to be just as excited about the fact that Claire Moore is back on a West End stage. She plays a Cockney grandmother called Babs. She's very no nonsense. She puts Phil Hollinghurst in his place. And I'm so thrilled that she gets an old school, as it should be, 11 o'clock number. It's not the penultimate number in the show. It's possibly not exactly where the 11 o'clock number ought to be, but it so is the feel of an 11 o'clock number. It's called Babs's Lament. I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but the writing of it is enough to be a great number. And in Cheltenham, it was a great number. But her delivery, now in the West End, has been dialed up so many notches, and the way that she puts it across and belts it out with this old school brassy delivery that I don't even think performers are trained to do anymore. I think I hear so many impressive high notes and riffs and people do vocal gymnastics that amaze me, but I don't know if people really know how to sell a number with just their own force and determination and showmanship like Claire Moore is showing you in this number. It is an old school musical theater lesson. She's amazing. You can just feel her energy reverberating around the theater. I so was ready to stand up and give this a late second act standing ovation. It was that much of a show-stopping number. It's a genuine showstopper because you feel this duration of applause that has just, everything has to pause for us to give recognition and pay tribute to the legendary Claire Moore. If by this point in my review, you haven't already paused me to go and buy tickets to go and hear Claire do this song, I don't know how to help you. Honestly, if you're not British, this may now be the time to book a flight. We have a couple more people left to mention. So Damien Humbley has a lovely character arc and a beautiful singing voice. We know that Damien Humbley has a beautiful singing voice. This is not new, um, but it's got a lovely arc and he has a child on stage, um, a young girl who plays his daughter. There are three different performers who share this role. I'm gonna shout out all of them. They are Maisie Mine, Emily Rouse, and Anya Shah. And he has a wonderful rapport with the performer that I saw at the particular opening night performance. He's tremendously heartwarming. The two of them share a duet, which is the second part of the show that made me cry if you're keeping score, and the one that I think is going to get everyone crying. And last but not least, we have the brilliant Charlotte Wakefield back where she belongs on a West End stage. She plays this lovely, endearing, relatable, down-to-earth character called Gemma. She's a carer from Blackpool and she enters the tent sort of nervously. She's not filled with confidence. Uh, she's actually the backup contestant, which is a real thing from the show that the writers found out while they were doing research and speaking to previous contestants. In fact, a backup contestant has gone on to win in a previous series. Uh, but Charlotte Wakefield is wonderful here. She's just so warm and so sweet and you really root for her and she has some tremendous moments in the show. She has some really great numbers that she gets to sing. She gets to sing this sort of tentative I want song in act one called Somewhere in the Doe. She gets to sing this act two song called Rise and she's here to give you vulnerability to the max and powerhouse vocals and that's a combination of things I have so much time for. She had moments in this show where I was like, why hasn't Charlotte Wakefield been Alphaba yet? I don't think anyone can give me a good answer to that question because her performance in this makes it feel inevitable. It gives you that act one 
Elphaba vulnerability. Not a comparison I thought I would be making with the Great British Bake Off musical, honestly, but Charlotte Wakefield's talent ignites that conversation. I'm not gonna tell you about the way that the plot unfolds because I think this show has some lovely surprises at its center. That is another baking pun. And I want you to be able to go and experience these for yourself. I hope that I have told you enough to give you a flavor of the show. I can't even stop. And hopefully if you do get to go and see it, you will enjoy it just as much as I have. So this is the question, isn't it? Who should go and see the Bake Off musical? If you like the show, The Great British Bake Off at all, you're gonna love this show. It's everything that we love about The Great British Bake Off as a TV series, the show captures that. It's getting to know all of these people and their personalities and the humans behind the cake. That's really what the show ultimately ends up being about and I think that's really lovely. If you like a come from away, if you like something very character driven and emotive, you're going to like this as well. It's very similar with a little bit more glitter in and amongst the tears. And it's not sad either. It's very much like a wholesome, happy, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful kind of a cry. I also think this has like a really broad appeal. You can take kids to this show very easily. It's family friendly. You can take elderly relatives to this show. It's a whole family situation. Everyone can go and see the Great British Bake Off musical. But more importantly, you don't need to have seen the TV show to get this. I don't think that it relies on any pre-existing understanding of the way that the TV show works. Um, I've already heard reports from people who hadn't seen it, went to see this, and loved it. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more videos coming soon just like this. In fact, I'm reviewing two more musicals this week, so keep your eyes peeled for those. As a reminder, you can click on the links in the description to sign up to be one of my YouTube members, to gain access to exclusive content, and to sign up for a free account with ShowScore so you can go and review shows for yourself. If you have already seen The Great British Bake Off musical in the West End, or if you're intrigued about the show, comment down below with all of your thoughts. I would love to hear what you thought of the show or what you're looking forward to about it. Also, if you have any other questions about the show, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>